Welcome everybody to uh, my presentation. My name is Jeroen Doornbus, and uh, I am given the floor today here in Amsterdam to tell you a little bit more about our company, Euronet. But before we do so, um, maybe I can ask a number of the attendees if everybody can hear me well. I believe there is a chat function that could uh, confirm to me. Hanu says yes, that means that everything is working well. I see that Oli is telling me the same, so that means <clears throat> we can continue. Well, uh, as I said, my name is Jeroen Dorenbus, representing the company Lenkos Euronet, or as we are in the fishing industry, more famously known as the Euronet. Uh, I'm based here in the Netherlands, in the fishing port of uh, Wymuden, and uh, that is where Euronet owns and operates one of its warehouses and distribution centers. Um, as you see on the slide, and I should start my session, of course, you see that this is the first time I do this. So as you can see on this slide here, um, there are a number of different company names in the bottom um, next to Euronet. Uh, I will go into that a little bit deeper because I can imagine some of you uh, know these names, but uh, just to tell it very briefly, you see uh, bottom right Wariko, and that is basically the group that uh, my company or our company Euronet, but also Oliveira or the company Ladresen, also one of uh, the netting manufacturers in Europe belong to. So just to have that clear. Uh, what I will do during my presentation is that uh, I will walk you through a company, uh, some of our products, but most importantly, I would like to talk to a few of our latest developments um, in netting, but also on the wire rope side and even on some net sounder cables. And this is not to try and sell you something today, not at all. Uh, what I would like to do is to tickle your brain a little bit and hopefully uh, leave you uh, after this presentation, either with some questions that we can answer later on or maybe some ideas for the future. So, um, I need to go to the next slide. Allow me for, yes. So what I want to do first is very briefly touch upon the history of the company. So in 1965, the father of our current director, he started a company in Portugal, Euronet. He was a very well-known and famous captain in the cod fisheries in, uh, in Portugal, or in Portugal actually around Canada. And uh, he came to, know, to notice that there was a lack of good netting. So he started Euronet in Portugal, making twine and netting. At the same time, there was a company in the Netherlands called Lenkhorst. They were in the north in Snake. They were a famous rope maker at that time. And these two companies by 1989 started working together to complement each other's product portfolio. Um, so that was twine and netting on one end and ropes and wire ropes on the other end. Um, that was in 2003 that the company existed for 200 years. And as a proud Dutchman, I would say, of course, I would tell you, I should say, uh, that our queen made us a royal company because of everything we've done. But uh, at that time, in 200 years, the company um, got this royal uh, recognition from the queen. And, uh, and uh, that was also the time that, um, no, I should say five years before 1980, uh, 1989, that 1998, that the company said formally merged. Uh, later on, 2009 and 2011, two more companies joined this group. Um, and more specifically, in 2011, it was the company uh, Le Dresin in France, uh, whom some of you may know, who, is a, uh, who are manufacturing tuna per se nets, uh, also some trolls, of course, for the local market. So by that time, the Lancos Euronet group had different entities making rope, netting, tuna per se, etc. Uh, 2012 marked the biggest change, so to say, for, for the Lancos Euronet group because that year, uh, Wireco became the owners of Lancorse Euronet. And with Wireco, basically, uh, Lancorse Euronet was joining one of the world's largest uh, wire rope manufacturers. And when they were part of it, um, uh, Wireco became, of course, also one of the largest um, rope manufacturers, fiber rope manufacturers. And uh, that meant that Lancorse Euronet was also part of a group where you had Oliveira, but also a company called Camesa. Camesa is based in Mexico, and that is a company where nowadays we as a group manufacture net sounder cables. But I will touch upon that a little bit later. So, um, next slide. What I would like to do now um, is to show you just a brief uh, video of our facilities in Portugal. Some of you, I see some names, have been there and have seen it. But uh, I think it is always nice to, to, to see that. I need to change to another system or another slide um yeah, here we have it i trust you can all hear it at wireco our experience through Lankhorst means we proudly bring over two centuries of expertise so in the manufacturing, manufacturing of, of ropes yarns of and engineered products and while we enjoy a rich past today we look to the future innovations that is in our veins 
we work together with universities. We have a big R&D department. We generate a lot of data. So the innovation is extremely important for us. We are the world's leading supplier of synthetic fiber ropes for the maritime, fishing and offshore industries and our strategically this located facilities in Europe, Brazil, and the U.S. allow us to deliver high-performance ropes for mooring, towing, and fishing like no one else can. Ropes can be made of various different materials, various different rope constructions. No two projects are the same. Our mission first is to serve our customers, keep our customers happy, and really go after what they are looking for. A client that comes to us and says, I need a product that has this X performance with this X characteristics. We're not selling this standard products, we're selling solutions. Engineered solutions, that's what we do. For every market, we have a specialist. And I think that is extremely important because the world is changing that fast that you need to have people who can change with that uh, world. Langhorst has a history of evolving, adapting our technical and manufacturing resources to meet challenging customer demands and market conditions. But through it all, one thing has never changed. We have always been, and will always be, a dedicated group of passionate, specialized people who will do anything to help you succeed. When a customer comes with a fast track project, we can always react, we can always serve the client, we can always provide them with, with the product when he needs, as he needs, whatever in the world that he needs. So, so that was a brief overview of our company. Maybe some of you have seen it. Um, hopefully some of you recognize the factory that you have uh, walked through in, uh, in the past or recent past. But anyhow, as you can see, Euronet, or we should say maybe Lenkers Euronet, we operate a fully, fully integrated manufacturing process. So what we do for rope and netting is that we extrude our fibers from raw granulates, polyethylenes or other materials. And then what we do is we make that into two yarns, we make that into twines in ropes and netting. So what we do is basically in Portugal, we control an entire process from base raw materials all the way up to the final product. So, um, and what you did not see in the video, um, and, and, and that is something that I will uh, hopefully share something on later on, is that we also manufacture our wire ropes in Portugal. Not only in Portugal, uh, we do that um, um, around the globe, but in Portugal, we have a manufacturing plant for steel wire ropes that, found that find their way into the um, into the fishing industry. And not only do we make those uh, wire ropes, we also produce the individual wires that the rope is made out of uh, inside our group. So also there, we ensure that we control the raw materials and we control the manufacturing process from raw material to, to intermediate to final product all the way up to the vessels. Good. Um, and now I need to switch back again. So, um, yeah, in a nutshell, I think we can say we uh, we are passionate about what we do. We consider ourselves to be rather uh, specialized. Most of the people have spent uh, quite a number of years in the company. If it's not a decade, it's, it, most of the times it's even longer. Um, but what we also um, try to show is that we um, we would like to find solutions to the market. Huh? Uh, one of my colleagues talked about engineering solutions that we do for the offshore industry. We do the same for the fishing industry. So often customers come to us and ask us, okay, we have an idea. We would like to test something. What would your recommendations be? What would you think of in terms of material? Because we have material knowledge. Or what would your suggestion be for certain designs, whether it's the type of netting <clears throat> or the way it is constructed? And that is what we like to do. Um, also important is creating value in the company. Uh, we take pride in the fact that uh, nowadays when we develop new products, one thing we always do is we look at uh, the sustainability of a product. So for us, that's a precondition if we start uh, designing something because, of course, sustainability means financial sustainability and we need to make money. That's clear for everybody. But what is also important is that nowadays we start thinking about, okay, and what, uh, what, what do we do with our materials once we stop using them? when they have worn out, or when we need to find uh, use other ways of fishing. We want to work in everything we do in, with in mind, keeping in mind that you know, we need to develop our products that there is an end of life um, solution for it. And that is something we do. Um, as a last, we're proud to have a global presence, a footprint. Um, you know, 
We want to have full line supply. We have ropes, we have netting, we have wire ropes, we have sounder cables. We do that in different factories. And that is something we take pride of. Um, it allows us also to bring some, you know, further reliability in terms of uh, uh, security of supply. And then um, as a last, we operate a number, and that's also about the global presence. We operate a number of uh, warehouses and sales offices around the world to ensure as, most as, pos as much as possible that we can supply our products quickly. For instance, here in, in Wymuden, we have two warehouses and uh, we have a rickshop. And from there, we have either Amsterdam Schiphol Airport or we have the Rotterdam Port and we can you know, ship globally anywhere within 24 hours. Shipping, not delivering, of course. Good. Um, going to the next slide. So uh, briefly, a little bit about netting. Um, before I go into some new netting that we have and that, I, as I said before, I would like to, let's say, tickle your brain with a little bit. Let me just briefly go through the netting so you are you know, familiar, familiar, familiarize yourself again with, uh, with our product. So, um, yeah, green PE, you see that in the graph on the left-hand side. Uh, green PE is a standard netting we all know. But then we have Euroline netting, which is our compact netting, compact PE netting, that basically is seen and used mostly on bottom trawlers where you need strength, but also abrasion resistance. That is what your line is all about, strength and abrasion resistance. But then if you want to go further into strength, allowing you, of course, to, to lower the weight of your total system, uh, we have premium netting. So I'm skipping a polyester and nylon for, for, for a minute. Um, premium, and I hopefully uh, you will recognize the yellow and green color. Premium has been in use for, uh, I would say, around uh, uh, two decades now. You see that in pelagic fishing for bellies. You see that in cod ends for, for ground fishing, whether it's up in the north where you go for cod or saith, or whether it is very thin netting that is used for cod ends and shrimp fishing. Premium is the netting that we have, which is flexible, which is uh, high strength, you can see that it has a strength of in, in, in grams per denier, which is a type of uh, reference for the strength for uh, given a certain weight. That it's nine and a half, so it's it's twenty five percent higher than the Euroline, and of course a bit more even compared to Green PE. Uh, and then we have Premium Plus, and that pro pro provides even greater strength um, and to allow to further further downsize your trolls or bellies or even cod ends. Uh, premium is found quite a bit in uh, bellies for uh, fishing in West African waters, but also for cut ends. Um, in between, we see nylon and polyester. Well, polyester is something very typical for beam trawling here in the Netherlands, but not, uh, the nylons, well, um, I know some of you are, are active in uh, the North Atlantic fisheries for either blue whiting or mackerel, and I think I can safely say, we tried to calculate it once that most of the vessels, if well, I wouldn't say all because that certainly is not true, but many of the vessels that are fishing, that have just stopped fishing blue whiting, for instance, will have been using uh, nylon netting that was manufactured by our group. So, but what I would like to do is put a little bit more attention to what we see on the on the right hand side of the slide, uh, a number of recent developments on netting. So let's uh, let's go to that. The first one that I would like to talk to you and, and, and tickle your brain with a little bit is uh, Euroglow. Uh, Euro, you see that from the name. Uh, it's what we always use, Euronet, Euroglow, Euroline. But glow means that the netting glows in the dark. Now, um, it's plain polyethylene green netting. But what we have done is that we have added, well, we have taken out a few standard strands and we have included a few luminous strands. And what are luminous strands? Well, they are luminescence. That means that when they are charged by UV or sunlight and afterwards put in the dark, they will start glowing. And you can see that from the pictures you see on the first picture, the top picture on the left, you see um, you, you see a bunch of ropes. And on the uh, downside, you see, um, you see a pot, a crab pot as they call it, a trap to catch crab. And that is also where they started off with. We came to figure out that um, crab is attracted to light. So we started testing the idea of adding the luminous material to netting and see what it does in crab fisheries. And the results were actually quite remarkable because the first tests that were carried out in Canada, and they were scientifically uh, um, carried out actually by the Marine uh, Research Institute, Marine Institute, um, is that they were seeing uh, quite a bit of an increase in catches. And you see there up to 50%. And that had all to do with the fact that they figured out snow crab and later on also um, king crab was attracted to this light. So the result for them was that they were catching more. But one of the other things that they were um, having issues with is that to get bait to remote areas in the north of Canada, uh, that's very expensive. So they took the other way around and said, well, if we use luminous netting, we don't have to use that much bait, but we still can continue to catch the same amount of crab. 
We did the same, it's not in the slide, um, in Russia, in the far east of Russia. Uh, and this time it was for king crab, Canada was snow crab. But um, in, uh, in the far east of Russia, they've done the same test and they were seeing uh, increases of catches, minimum 30%, maximum 50%. So um, for some of you that may know, in the far east of Russia, the crab quota have gone up and they have been up, put up for sale. So people spend a lot of money and want to catch a lot, of course, to earn their money back. Now we see that there's an increase in demand and just uh, last month again a container of this netting has gone out. But I also know of course that I'm talking here to many people that have nothing to do with static gear fisheries like crab fishing but with um, trawling. Um, well, as you can see on the slide, uh, DTU Aqua has a project called Vision and there they have looked into the possibility of using a light to attract or distract fish to see if light in a trawl can contribute to uh, the selectivity of the trawl. Uh, this is still going on. There are some results in. Uh, there, there's nothing I can share, unfortunately. But in this case, for nephros, they have seen it. And this was spe specifically also to uh, prevent other types of whitefish to, to get into the trawl. Um, so why am I telling you all of this? Well, it's very simple. Uh, we think that for the future, there is a, there is a, you know, there's a possibility that light can play a role. And one of the fantasies of this netting is it's very simple. You need a bit of UV light. It will glow in the water for a couple of hours. You don't need any power. You don't need any lights that you need to change, nothing at all. And that is something that uh, we are now discussing in, uh, with various customers. And you know, my, I would say my invitation to you, <laughs> the audience is, if you see an idea, if you have an idea, get in touch with us or with your net maker, with many of whom we, we have close uh, partnerships with. And uh, let's give it a try and see if we can try something. Um, the other thing that I would briefly like to touch about, because it has been in the market for a number of years, and I know it's not something revolutionary new, but that's um, Nautilus netting. Nautilus netting, hopefully many of you have seen, I think so. Um, well, in Portugal, we, we do manufacture this as well now for a couple of years for various applications. And uh, well, what you see with, with Nautilus netting is it, that it is providing some advantages. You know, you can lower the weight of your um, cotton, for example, you will have no not so that means that of course if you uh, catch your fish the fish will not be damaged and um you know that is uh, well wait a minute i need to go back to the next slide i was just too quick my apologies so that is um um not just netting is something that we see increasing the market for now we see that most of it is used for bottom fisheries one of the advantages being as i just said it, it doesn't have the knots so if you pull something onto a slip or on a slipway trawler, the forces of the of the fish, contrary to the deck, will be very equal. You don't have any damage on your your nuts, but also, as I said, fish is not being damaged. So it has good wear. Um, it has good uh, uh, quality. It will lead to good quality of the fish, and it will save you weight. Um, and why weight? People say, well, it's very simple. If you knot a net, you need to make a knot, and the knot is weight without having any, you know significant length in the mesh. So the knots being out of the system means that you have less weight. Um, on the next slides, um, well, here you see uh, how it looks like. Um, we have it in three styles. You can either make it from polyethylene, the, the premium plus filaments we use then to, to reach high strength. We can also make it into nylon um, and we can, can make it with Dyneema fibers. We have done everything, uh, everything is tried um, uh, for the nylon now also in the tuna fisheries. And uh, well, we are waiting for the first results on that. Now, if you look a little bit about mesh sizes, what can you achieve? I have had questions from people, can you make a 40 full mesh netting? No, unfortunately I cannot. Uh, our machine doesn't have that capability. But here it tells you a little bit about, you know, diameter of the twine, give or take, strength, and then, you know, what type of mesh size we can do. And one of the new things that we have done is that we have played a lot with the post-treatment of the netting. Um, what you can do, of course, is if you finish netting, you can just sell it as is or use it as is. Uh, we have decided to put some um, um, uh, post-treatment, uh, heat treatment um, uh, application on it after the uh, manufacturing of the net, there with allowing the net to become even more stiffer, there with the net to uh, prevent even more any elongation in the system, so you have a very stable mesh size, but also it allows us to go down in the mesh size um, that we can make out of, of uh, out of uh, our machine. And on the right hand side, you see, I believe, fishing vessel Victoria, a German Swedish vessel with a cut end full of sate in this case. 
Here you see another application of Eurocross. In this case, you see a premium cutout with an escape panel for the netting. Um, so you see that, um, and you see it a lot also in Baltic fisheries, for instance, um, that escape panels are being uh, uh, made mandatory in the trawl. And nautilus netting allows itself very well for the application because you can pull it square easily, that's no problem, and your bars are very even. And you don't have any knots. So if you have a certain regulation where you need to have a certain square mesh in your system, or if you want to put square mesh in just for the sake of having some selectivity, Yodoklas can be one of the products that you can or should think of. Good. And if there's any questions, uh, feel free or later, that's, uh, that's no problem. Another new netting that we have put up into the market last year, um, yeah, end of last year, is what we nowadays call Royal. Um, high performance fibers, I just mentioned one, Dyneema, but there's others, um, are used in netting uh, more and more, in the fisheries more and more, I should say, but also for netting. But this is a blend, and um, there's a few reasons for this. Um, one is that if you use uh, high performance fibers, um, they tend to be slippery, so you need double nuts. Royal is a high performance fiber netting that doesn't need a double nut. It is weight saving uh, in your system, and therewith, that's also a matter of cost saving. Um, in this case, obviously, if you compare it to traditional netting, you will see that the netting has a lower diameter. It is lighter intrinsically. Uh, you will see a better performance on abrasion because it is used, made from high performance fibers that are known to have a high abrasion resistance. Um, if you ask me, okay, what did you develop it for? Um, the first application that we developed this for was for a fish farming installation, actually. And the advantage of this netting that it brought to the to the cage operators was that um, rather than having a double wall system where you have a containment net where the fish is in and you have a net on the outside that keeps predators out, here they could go to one system because this net is abrasion resistant but also cut resistance. So sharp edges or teeth from predator fish um, uh, it can withstand very well. So um, in the end, um, we said, okay, works, good for the aquaculture industry. And now we're also at the point where we said, okay, but what could this bring to trolling? Now, we've had a few ideas. There's some uh, people thinking about it. You see some, some, some strengths being mentioned, uh, bottom left. Um, but I think in general, what it comes down to is uh, we believe with this netting that we have been, we are close or have closed the gap between let's say anything traditional up until the premium plus that I was showing you, and then up to, you know, 100% Dyneema netting, for instance. You know, this is really filling this gap where you can say, okay, you know, I need something, but I don't want a double net. I want to have an efficient net, but I want to have high strength. Also on Royale, um, it's a very firm construction. Um, so very round, uh, compact. Um, that's also one of the advantages that we should, uh, should not be hiding, I would say. And um, yeah, it's it's in colors available, but I don't believe that will be uh, the, the the main uh, topic to uh, to discuss. But um, yeah, again, all the nets are uh, nuts are on the same side. That means that of course you have a flat surface and a rough surface for the nuts, so that can be taken into account when building a trawl or a cut end. And hopefully, also this is one of those products, and I'm pretty sure it is, that you might think now, hey, you know, that's interesting that this is in the market. I need to know more about that. Well. Talk to your net, man your trawl manufacturer, or get in touch with us. That's also fine, and we we can sit all three together. But think about it: higher strength, single nuts, closing the gap between what we have today and the more expensive dynamics. Um, a last one. We call it Euro Line and NF. NF NF stands for non-floating. This is basically a, a, a green PE netting, but we have included basalt fiber, stone fiber. Uh, we know that in the aquaculture industry, again, there was there was demand for netting that would stand straight, that would sink a little bit, um, but couldn't be nylon. Um, but we also know that then, you know, traditionally we as a fishing industry or fishing gear manufacturing industry have been looking for lead. Well, lead is one of those materials that people rather not see in the sea anymore, uh, if at all uh, still allowed. So we started working on something else. And this is a netting that is fully recyclable because stone fiber is just a natural material. And of course, PE is also uh, uh, fully recyclable and it provides cut resistance, it sinks. Now, you would ask me, what do I do with netting if I'm a trawler, if I, oper if I skipper a trawler, if I operate uh, you know, trawlers? Well, one of the things that we thought of is, um, we sometimes see people where they would actually, we see people asking us, 
for netting where they say, if we would have a little, you know, sinking effect on our bottom netting, but still we like to have, you know, the some of the advantage of, uh, advantages of a polyethylene netting. Well, this could be the one. Um, again, some people are now um, questioning themselves and asking themselves, should we do that? So there's some, some inquiries underway. And again, I challenge you or invite you to, to think along. Um, as I said, this is made from um, polyethylene. If we can do it in anything else, that has to be seen. For now, it is with polyethylene, and uh, yeah, feel free. Good. Um, yeah, something on ropes, but I will very briefly go into that. So we're also a rope manufacturer, whether it's a Dyneema rope or whether it's a nylon rope or a polyethylene rope. Um, that's all in, in our portfolio. Um, also on combination ropes, um, and on combination ropes, we have four-strand ropes and six-strand. Well, six-strand ropes you see in different applications in trolls, of course. The four strands are known as, uh, as uh, mostly as sane ropes. And that's also one thing that I would like to uh, briefly touch upon. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody in the uh, in the presentation, but we have developed a, a new uh, line of Eurosign uh, uh, Sane ropes. We call it Eurosign Premium. Um, it has an advanced performance level, so to say. So what we've done is we made a more stiffer construction, also looking at the packing of, of wires and fibers together. And what we have achieved is a higher level of, of, of let's say, um, um, retention of the diameter. When you go saning, Danish saning, the ropes after use tend to elongate a bit. You lose a certain weight per meter. So that means that the sinking speed, et cetera, could change. Well, here you see a very high level of stability in that. Um, but, um, um, and what we, um, what we also do is, um, in the past, we typically made these in certain lengths, five, soft, five something or 600 and something meters, for instance, 660. But we can make these ropes in lengths of 1,000 meters and sometimes up, depending a little bit on the diameter, of course. So that means that if you go zaning and you want a certain length of, I would say, 2,500 meters, you need two splices instead of three or four or five. And we all know, in the end, a splice is always one of the weak spots in the system. So the more splices you can prevent in your system, the better it is for your operation. Um, some other things, wire ropes, I touched about it, um, well, very briefly, but the wire rope, so you have a core in it, and then there's a couple of strands, typically six, and each strand is consisted of a number of wires, most often 19 or 26 in fishing, and that altogether is what we call a rope. We make it all in house, but there's one thing I would also like to uh, show you here. Well, this is our range, so I think most of you uh, will, will consider this a, a given, of course. So 619, 626 ropes with compacted strands typically for, for trawling, but also round strands. Um, turbo wire for those of you who are familiar with 3x31 ropes, often used for, uh, for bridles and some other work ropes. But what I really would like to talk about is your all. Um, so far, ropes in the fishing industry, well, so far, largely ropes in the fishing industry are still considered to be what they call galvanized. It's a steel wire with a layer of 100% zinc. And zinc is considered to be a corrosion resistant material. And it is. We sell a lot of it and it works. But um, about 15 years ago, we started working with what we call Ural. And Ural is a mixture of zinc and aluminium in the coating, together with some other rare earth materials, by the way. And what it does, it does that it provides a higher level of ductility, but also when you mix aluminium with zinc and put that onto the layer or onto the wire, the steel wire, you will see a higher um, 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 uh, intrinsic corrosion resistance from sea, uh, seawater, for instance. So this is what it is. Um, Ural is basically nothing else but than the ropes we know them, but they are then instead of coated with 100% zinc, AKA galvanized, they are coated with a mixture of um, zinc and aluminium. So what do you get? You will get double the resistance to corrosion and that is measured by, by two things, but uh, most importantly, it's a salt spray test. In practice, it works. Dutch beamers are using this for, well, as I said, 15, maybe even 20 years. I would have to, um, to, to look back. Um, but it has a double resistance to corrosion. Uh, salt spray test is an ISO defined test. We have done those tests and it, that is what it shows. It provides you know, a, a greater level of corrosion. So the coating layer is, is, is less attacked by salt water or other corrosive agents. You also see about 30% higher 
adhesion to grease. So if you put grease on a wire, which we all do, uh, more or less depends a little bit. I know Dutch beamer uh, uh, fishermen, for instance, like to have a greasy rope. Some others prefer a little bit less grease. But in the end, the grease you have, you want to remain on the rope as long as possible. And we have also seen that up to 30% higher level of um, the longevity of the adhesion is shown. And then we see also double the resistance to abrasion. And what do I mean with that? We're looking at mostly how the coating layer, uh, how the coating layer, um, uh, wait a minute, I need to, uh, at least now you can see me, yeah. So how the coating layer on a wire is, um, um, is damaged when you have it under crushing forces, for instance, coaxial pressure, for instance, and that you see in blocks. And by adding a little bit of aluminium to the zinc, it will become a little bit softer. So that means that when you cross it into your sheave, where you typically can have damage already from previous operations, the layer will stay on longer. So it won't show that much micro cracks. And if you have micro cracks on your coating layer on the wire, the corrosive agents, whether it's salt water or even something else, which can happen, of course, will attack the base material inside the wire faster. And that is what we have seen, all, that, that is what, what, what Ural is also providing. And right now we started uh, calculating back because, of course, for this presentation, we want to have reliable information. Um, at least 400 vessels have, have, uh, have putting this into use right now, uh, wide range of vessels that can be Euro cutters here in Holland with 22 or 24 millimeter wire, but all the way up to 42 millimeter wire on pelagic trawlers. Um, that is in use right now. Um, that is what we see. And well, hopefully what we believe, at least that's the trend that more and more of our customers say, hey, you know, I want to try it. And then we see repeat orders. So bear in mind, if you ever have a situation where you say, hey, we want to try something new, see if we can get longer lifetime out of our troll warps, for instance, think about your own. Going back to the slides. Um, yeah, one of the last things I would like to talk about is, uh, is net sounder cable. Uh, as I said before, why go uh, a group with a number of companies and there's one of these Mexican companies called Camesa. About a couple of years back, I was asked, hey guys, if you have this group with all these companies, can you make net sounder cable? Well, let's check. We could, we tested it. And I'm still thankful for the people that tested it. I believe even some of them are in this presentation. So thank you for that again. Uh, we tested it and uh, luckily for us, it turned into a success. The cable uh, worked very well. And uh, January 18, we made the formal commercial launch of the product. Uh, what we can offer is two designs basically, which is a monoconductor. And the other one is of course a coaxial cable, which is the predominantly used uh, uh, dimension, uh, a design, sorry. And um, we have two different diameters, or three actually, 9.2 for the mono and 11 or 11.4 as you like for uh, um, whatever you like, both of them um, in the coaxial or dual conductor cable. Yeah. What do we offer? About 12% higher brake strength, very tight diameter control. Um, that's something we noticed when there was a vessel that had a groove drum. I'm not sure it was a Liebe system, but it had a groove drum and they needed very tight diameter control. Well, that is something we have, um, plus or minus 0.5% give or take. Uh, and firmly packed, you see a picture there. So onboard storage is no problem. If you say I need a spare on my vessel and it needs to sit there for a while, fine. Um, it's available from stock all the way from 2000 up to 40,000 with increments of 500 meters. So those are in stock. And we have uh, seen and we have gotten the feedback that it works well with any Simrad or Westmar system uh, widely in use uh, in, um, in our industry. And we make it in house and it's made under ABS quality standards, which is the American Bureau of Shipping. So I would say, don't worry about the quality. That is all fine. Good. Uh, before I go to any questions. Um, yeah, well, th thank you very much for, uh, for uh, hearing me, seeing me. Um, it was a, a quite an interesting uh, experience to stand here all by myself, more or less uh, looking inside of video, but thank you very much. Um, there's time for some questions. Um, I already see one first question from Jörg van. Uh, is there a special wire rope design construction for slipways and shipyards cradles? So we're talking Jörg van about pulling a vessel onto the slipway in the shipyard, right? Um, in all fairness, that is something outside of my range. So as much as I would like to give you an honest answer, I'm not gonna make one up here. I'm gonna check for you. And if you agree with me, I will come back because for that specific applications, I have no clear answer right now.
Anybody else? Any questions or suggestions or feedback? Or I'm looking at this screen here to see if something comes in. This is one of the awkward things of giving a presentation like this. Well, I don't see any questions. Well, um, I'm there, um, bottom left, bottom right, I should say. Together with my colleagues, Casper and Pedro, the three of us work, well, among many others, work for the group. And uh, you can always get in touch with us through Facefax, uh, Fishfax. Sorry. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I did. Um, if there's anything getting in touch, we are more than happy to help or provide any answer to a question you may have. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.